Hey everybody, Ray here. Today I'm going to show you how to take a dirty old workbench and make it look really nice, brighten it up, and give yourself a good hard surface to work on. If you're interested in seeing how I do that, stick around and I'll show you. And don't forget, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up for me, and don't forget to subscribe. About 35, 36 years ago, my dad built me this workbench. You know, I guess I'm kind of like my dad in that if he didn't have something to do, he was just a lost soul. So he was always looking for projects. So when he volunteered to build a workbench for me, I said, go for it, man, I could use it. So we had this new house. He put this nice workbench on there. The problem is over the years, and I'm gonna show you with a picture here, it had gotten really dark and dirty. In one place I had done some spray painting. The spray paint got into the MDF. And then if I do different projects, the spray paint would rub on the MDF and it would rub off onto my project. So I decided I wanted to paint it or cover it or do something. My first thought was that I would just cover it with Formica. Then I thought, well, before I do that, why don't I just try painting it and sealing it in? So I got some extreme bonding primer and I painted it white. One of the things that I really like is that it really brightens up my shop. The problem is, as you can see here, some of the oil or whatever kept, keeps leaching through this white bonding primer. And I just don't like that. It doesn't look very nice. So. I thought, what else could I do? And for some reason, this morning I woke up and I thought, why not just put some vinyl flooring on here? So I went out and I got some vinyl flooring. It's not gonna be as bright as the white, but it's still gonna be lighter than what I had on here. And you know, it's a shop. And for some reason, working on cars and so forth, as long as I did, Gray is the color that you have in a shop. So I've got this gray paneling that I'm gonna put on this workbench, and I think it should look great. So I'm gonna show you how I proceed to do this, and I think it's gonna be a fun project, and I'm pretty darn excited about it. You'll start out by laying your initial piece against your wall where you wanna start. There's a lip that joins these pieces together. I'm gonna to show you that a little bit more closely. And then right here, I had to cut out a little notch to fit around this piece of trim here. So you can see these little notches that allows them to click together. So on this side, it's over the top. On that side, it comes up under the bottom. And then those two lips will catch together. So you start out by laying out your first plank. You want to stagger your edges. So you take a, the next plank and you cut it in half. Then for your first piece here, it's very simple just to push it on there. Make sure that those two ends catch. Get your edges lined up. And there you go. That's not going to go anywhere. Those two pieces are now clicked together in such a way that you can actually just barely even see the seam where they join together. When you put on your next long piece, for the back, it's very simple. Just make sure that they're locked in. Make sure that your seams are lined up so you're nice and even against the wall. And then just kind of tap it in there gently. I've got a little rubber hammer here that I'm using and that seam will be just as tight as can be. When you have to join a long piece here and then the short piece here. The way to do that is just to make sure you're lined up. And you want to make sure that your edge is ready to slip right down into there. So I line up this first edge and the back edge. Because if you've got those lined up, then the rest of it should be pretty simple. And then just push that in. You'll see your seam closes nice and tightly. And then to get your joint here, just take your hammer, take your mallet, and that's it. That joins that together very nicely, very securely. 
When my dad built me this workbench, he thought there were two critical things that I had to have. One was a vise and the other was a grinder. Frankly, I just don't use either one of them very often. So the grinder stays under the workbench. When I need it, I pull it out and I use it, then I put it away. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this. I'm gonna find a way to put this on a frame such that when I need it, I can bring it out, I can use it, and then when I don't need it, I can put it away again. Now we've come to the end of our run where we need to start fitting the pieces to go all the way to the edge of the workbench. And I'm simply going to take this scrap piece that I cut off two feet when I started to the other end and I'm going to figure out where that needs to line up there and then I'm going to mark it to cut it so I've got just a little bit of extra. I'm going to leave maybe an eighth inch of extra on the side because when I'm done what I'll do is I'll come back with a trim router and I'll trim all this stuff, the excess off of the edges. When you cut this vinyl material, it's actually pretty easy. To cut the notch out on that end down there for the trim board, I just used a little bitty hacksaw, and that's all it took. The instructions tell you that what you should cut it with is a razor. So you could very easily score along here with a razor and cut this off with a razor. Now what I do, because I have the tools, is I'll use my miter saw to cut the edges here, and then I will have to rip some long edges and I'll do those with my table saw. But don't let that deter you. You don't need to have the power tools. A razor will do just fine when you want to cut this material. Now we wind up with about an inch and a half or so that I'm going to have to rip this lengthwise to fit on here. So what I want to make sure that I do is I cut it in such a way that I still have the lip here to connect my next piece. It'll fit flush against my wall. And it's going to create a whole bunch of scrap. But I'm not too worried about that scrap because after I cut all these pieces off, I'm going to have some left over. And because my bench is actually 2 feet by 12 feet, so 24 square feet, um, these boxes come with 24 square feet. Unfortunately, they're not cut exactly in the width that I need to do this. So I knew that I was going to have scrap. And I knew that I'd have to buy two boxes. So my thinking is, um, oh, and for one thing, I got this at Home Depot. Uh, it was on sale for uh, $36, I believe, $36 a box. So I got two boxes. Which, is, which was enough to do 48 square feet um, for less than $80. So this is a pretty inexpensive project. So what I'll do is I, as I come along and I have scraps, I'll take those scraps and I'm just gonna create myself a little backsplash back there. A couple of reasons for that. Uh, one is it brightens up the whole workbench and makes it look better. Two is that there's a little space back here between the workbench and my pegboard where sometimes things fall. So in order to prevent that, this backsplash will work perfectly. If I have enough left over, I might even just come up the side here under here and just cover this whole wall. So if I bang into it with things, I won't damage it. So we'll figure out how to use that extra, extra vinyl somewhere. So what I'm going to do is take a trim router with a flush mount bit and just run that along the side to make my vinyl here flush with the side of my workbench. Make sure you wear a mask. And this stuff makes a mess, as you can see. I already tried it down at the end of the workbench. So it's gonna be messy, be prepared. You're gonna to have to clean it all up. If you don't have a trim router, no worries. Just make sure when you cut that, you cut it so it's flush with the edge of your workbench anyway. So just in case you didn't believe me about the router mess, look at all those chips of gray on the floor. And look on the wall over here, apparently these guys developed a little bit of static and man, they are sticking to everything. I got a mess to clean up. Now I want to put my trim back on here, but I have to move my trim up slightly because this is about, oh, a little over an eighth of an inch, I guess, thick, this vinyl. And I want my board to be flush with that vinyl because this this is free floating on here. I don't want to have to glue it down. 
And if it's against the wall back there and I've got a piece of trim up here, it'll keep it flush and keep it in there without me having to glue it in. Well, all that's left now is the cleanup. Tell you what, I am so happy with this. This stuff is really hard and durable. I think it's going to be great. I like the lighter color. It makes it look brighter in my garage. It's going to be easier to find tools and screws and washers if I drop them on here. I'm going to give you a before and after photo so you can see the difference, but this is so much nicer. I wound up with about three and a half pieces left over out of two boxes because I took some, and you can't see it, but I put it on the wall next to the workbench where I roll my saws in and out, and I tend to beat up the wall a little bit, so that'll cover the wall. I don't know what I'll do with the other three and a half pieces. I'll figure out something. At any rate, I'm really happy with this project. I think it's going to do great for me. If you like this project, hey, do me a favor. Hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.